All right, well, welcome back. So we're gonna continue on with our owners class. This time we are gonna get into the sewing screen. So in the last class, of course, we talked about um, the opening screen here where Knowledge Center is and, and the sewing advisor. But if we wanna get sewing on a project, we're gonna go down here to start new in the bottom right hand corner. And that is gonna take us right into the sewing screen. We have our stitches here in the right hand side. and. We can pan through these stitches. We move our finger up the screen to get the more expanded view here of what else is in the menu. And when we swipe to the side, that is gonna bring us through the rest of our stitches. And we can also quickly go through the menus here. So if we wanna jump all the way to maybe our K menu, so then we can go to that menu and then we can scroll up and we can select then the stitch that we want to do. We can also get an expanded view if we want of our sewing menus. Um, and, and this is nice. I typically don't open up my, my big view, but you can. Um, and then you can see the stitches that you wanna do a little bit more up, cl up close. You can, it just means you can do a little bit less panning and you can get a quicker view. And you can of course jump through different menus to get to different stitches there. And that's done to get the expanded view. This is our little stitch menu button right here. The one that looks like a zigzag. So if you touch that, it opens up the bigger view. And if I touch it again, it is going to shrink the view back down to our normal view. So when we select a stitch, we see the stitch on the display. The stitch we see on the display is the actual size it stitches on the fabric. So when we make adjustments to the stitch, we are gonna see it change on the screen again, to show us the actual size it's gonna be on the fabric. So Husqvarna's now on, on these machines are nine millimeters on their stitch width. It means the needle can move nine millimeters side to side. Where on previous model Husqvarna's, it was only seven. So our stitches are now bigger than they were before. If we wanted to make the stitch narrow, we would use the negative button or the minus button here on the display that shows where the zigzag symbol is. And you can see on the display, the stitch is getting narrower. And you'll notice when I do change the stitch length or width, the, the color of the number changes, just to let you know that you did make changes to the stitch. So if I go all the way back up to nine, you'll see the number goes black again. Now over here, this is our length of pattern. So if I wanted to make the pattern shorter, I can hit the minus button. If I wanna make the pattern longer, I can hit the plus button. And again, just to reemphasize this, this is the actual size it's going to stitch on the fabric. So the other thing I wanna point out is they give you the length of the entire pattern rather than just tell you how long each individual stitch is. So it's a lot easier to do maybe some calculations. If I'm trying to do a row of these across a piece of fabric where I wanna start at the beginning and I wanna make sure I end at the end of a completed pattern across my fabric, I can measure my fabric now. And I know that each pattern is 33 millimeters and I can kind of figure out where I need it to be. Because maybe if I'm on 33 millimeters, it's not gonna end at the end of a pattern for the length of my fabric. So then I can shrink it to whatever number I need to make sure it completes the pattern at the end. And then I remember too, if you wanna know exactly what one pattern length is, if I touch my stop button on the front of the machine, it'll take away the other patterns. That is the length of one pattern in its entirety, which again is 33 millimeters. All right, these buttons right here are our mirror image buttons. This is how we flip flop the stitch. So the bottom one is gonna flip flop the stitch from right to left. The top one is gonna flip flop the stitch from top to bottom. So top to bottom, right and left and you can do both together. And again, they change colors to let you know that you've made that change to the machine. So we got our width, we got our length of pattern. Now over here, we have, this is, you can think of it essentially as tensions, even though it's not. When we're on a regular straight stitch, the machine uses standard sewing machine tensions, meaning it applies pressure on the thread and that's how the stitch is formed on this machine has a really nice piece of technology built into it called the Deluxe Stitch System. 
The deluxe, deluxe stitch system means a few different things. Um, it means it's not dragging thread through tension plates and straining the thread. It actually has a series of wheels that give a measured amount of thread for every stitch that the machine does. So when the machine has the ability also to sense the thickness of the fabric, so it knows how thick your fabric is and it knows how much thread to give to that stitch. Why do we want this? We want it for a few reasons. One is when we do all of our decorative stitches, they look the same on the underside as they do on the top because it's able to pull in tighter on the bottom. Traditionally, sewing machines, when you sew on them, the decorative stitches look a little looser on the underside. Well, this machine um, can get a much bal better balance on the decorative stitches. So that's one reason. The other reason it's a huge benefit is it allows you to now work with much uh, harder threads to traditionally sew with. So metallic threads, you can now have the freedom to sew with metallic threads without them, without you worrying that they're going to break over and over and over again, because metallic threads are really tough to sew with. They can't handle being drugged through tension plates. They're such a fragile thread that they end up breaking. And so then there's lots of different hoops that people have to jump through to try to sew with metallics, which is things like lubricating the thread, turning the tensions really low and all these things. But on this machine, you don't have to do any of that because the machine is not straining the thread. It uses wheels to deliver the thread. So really, it's a really great system. So to make a long story short, when you look at this number here, this is essentially thinking of it the same way as tensions. So if you wanted to adjust the stitch tensions, you can go up numbers or you can go down numbers and it'll make the same type of changes as a regular tension would. But you really don't ever have to adjust it. I mean, the machine is preset and does a really good job knowing where it needs to be for the stitches that you're working on. So, but that's what that number is. And if you notice there's a little toggle next to it, that will toggle it to a different adjustment. And now we have our foot pressure adjustment. So if you wanted to adjust how much force the presser foot is pushing against the fabric, you could adjust it here. The machine does self-adjust its foot pressure. So um, there's very, I can't think of a single time that I've ever actually had to adjust the foot pressure. But of course, um, they want to give you the option if you are doing some special sewing, special techniques. Also, you'll notice there's a little toggle next to the zigzag. This basically does what's called stitch positioning. Um, we're going to pick a different stitch and I'll show you stitch positioning. Be, you, we can reposition any stitch, but you have to make the stitch uh, not, not its full width to do it. So let me just select stitch 18 here because this is a narrow little stitch. So let's say we're, we're, we're sewing stitch 18. And if you notice, it is coming from the middle of the presser foot right? So that would be normal. But let's say we needed that stitch to be all the way off to the right. So that's where stitch positioning comes in. So I'm going to toggle it to change to stitch positioning. And now you'll notice the stitch is going to reposition itself to the right or to the left or wherever I want it to be. So I'm not, again, I'm not changing the stitch. I didn't make the stitch width wider. I didn't make the stitch length longer. I just moved it to a different position underneath my presser foot because for what I'm sewing, maybe this is a better way for me to gauge it. Let's go back to a regular straight stitch here so that I can show you needle positions. So we have a regular straight stitch on the machine. Um, if I needed to move the needle to sew in different positions, so if I'm like sewing in a zipper, of course, we need to move the needle over, then I can use the same one here, stitch positioning, um, and it'll move it over to the right. There is no zigzag adjustment on a straight stitch because straight stitch doesn't have width to it. So it's just moving the needle into different positions. So if I needed it to the other side of the foot, then I can hold this down and it's going to move it to the other side. But I'll show you a little trick. So if you're sewing in a zipper and you have your zipper foot on and you need your needle off to the left for the part of the zipper you're sewing, and then the next step you're going to need the needle over to the right, just use your mirror image button. See that? Flip-flopped it because it mirror imaged the stitch. So you don't actually have to toggle back um, all those presses to get the needle to the other side. And you'll notice this symbol changed because we're on a straight stitch uses regular tensions instead of the metering system, the, the deluxe stitch system. So then the symbol changes, but that's where our tension adjustment is. The tensions too, Again, everything is set properly. You don't really have to adjust it. If you're feeling like you're having tension problems, you're you need to rethread the machine. Um, it's usually a threading issue, not not actually a tension issue. But if you do change this, it doesn't matter that you changed it. The machine doesn't remember it. 
So if I leave this stitch and I go back to this stitch, it's back to normal. So you don't have to worry that you're going to change your machine permanently because you're not. The machine also always tells you the proper foot to use. So there is an A on the, the foot on the screen showing us that is our standard normal foot to work with. As I switch to different stitches, the stitch may change. Let's actually go all the way to a different stitch. So now you can see it's a B foot for the stitch um, for these particular stitches. So the foot will change to tell you what the proper foot is that you're working. It's also going to uh, tell you what fabric choice you have selected in your opening screen. So the machine is still set to stretch medium. We're going to go change that in a minute. Um, it's going to show us because we're on a stretch fabric, a 90 stretch needle to do this stitch. The stitch we're on is in the C menu, stitch 16, and it's showing us using some interfacing. If we were meant to use the built-in walking foot, the upper feeding system, you are going to see that there. That's the top feed teeth symbol um, showing us that we should have that activated for what we're sewing. I'm going to go back to our little opening screen because I want my machine set back to woven medium. Um, and that's important to know. Woven medium should always be your go-to default on your stitch selection. And the machine will remember what stitch you, you are, what, sorry, what fabric selection. The machine is going to remember what fabric you last had selected. So even if you turn the machine on and off, it's going to always think you're on whatever fabric you last picked. So you want to always go back to woven medium. So if I was doing some stretch fabric and I was done sewing the stretch fabric before I put the machine away, I want to set it back to woven medium. The reason why is that is the most commonly used fabric and that makes the machine go to its most common um, position for all the stitches and all the settings. So go back to woven medium. When I'm working on people's machines and I get them in my shop, if they're not set to woven medium, I always set it back before I give their, them their machines back. So, um, so make sure you're set to woven medium. But again, so this, this will, will give you your little indicator of where your machine is actually set. Okay, we're going to go to a satin stitch because I want to show you that a satin stitch has a few extra adjustments on it. So satin stitches are stitches that stitch out very, very close together. So let me pick, we'll just pick this satin stitch here. Um, so with the satin stitch, you can see it on the display uh, and we can actually stitch some of this out so that you can, you can see what it stitches out like. But um, when we're doing a satin stitch, we have the ability to lengthen the pattern and change the stitch density. So I'm gonna stitch just a few of these patterns out really fast here so you can see these. And then we're gonna make a few changes to them. All right, so we got our, our stitch here, right? So we can, again, do the normal adjustments. We can make it less wide, uh, more wide, but we have this one that is gonna elongate the pattern. But you're noticing that when the pattern is elongating, it's not actually changing the density of the pattern. The pattern is still gonna be a nice, tight satin stitch. We've just made the pattern longer. So I'll let this finish and you can take a look at this. Okay, so we made the pattern longer, right? So now let's say we did need to change our density because maybe we're sewing with a fatter thread and the fatter thread um, isn't gonna work as well because our stitching is so close together. So then we're gonna use the toggle and you're gonna notice now we have a stitch length ability to change. So this is gonna change the density. So when I go up numbers, you are actually gonna see it change on the screen. See how the stitch is really getting looser and looser and looser and looser until it's almost completely deconstructed. So let's just go uh, a, little, a little looser here. And I'll sew this off and you can see. So they're giving us um, complete stitch control here to do any change we want. Again, we can change the length of the pattern, but leaving it a tight stitch. We can change the density of the pattern. Uh, we can change the width. We can change the position of the pattern under the presser foot. So lots of different um, stitch controls when we're on a satin stitch. 
All right, so this machine also has multi-directional feeding, meaning the fabric can move in every direction when sewing. So let's go into our K menu. Our K menu has a lot of our multi-directional stitches or omni-motion stitches is what they're, they're known by. That's the name Husqvarna gave them years ago. So then let's go and pick something kind of fun here. Um, let's just pick this, this guy here. So I'm gonna change the camera view and you can see how wide the stitch now has become on the screen. It's much wider than the presser foot because the fabric is gonna move this way um, also when it's sewing. So watch that happen when we change the, the camera. All right, so I'm gonna use my start stop button for this. And so see how the fabric is now moving from left to right? It's actually going on top of my little satin stitch. I should have started with a new piece of fabric. That's okay, you'll get the gist of it. So the multi-directional feeding is, is actually quite great um, with Husqvarna. They've had it on many of their machines since uh, I think the late, late 80s, possibly early 90s. I think starting with the Viking number one, I believe, so quite a long time ago. So we are going to stop it there. I'm gonna hit the little cutter. And then we get the, the, little, the little person there, yep. So that is the multi-directional feeding. There is another one though, where we can be in control of multi-directional feed. So let me actually do this on, um, on the machine here. You can't see display now, I, I realize that, but I'm, I will change the view in a second so that you can, you can actually see what's happening. So if I hit start on the stitch that I've selected, the machine is gonna feed, See that? It's feeding sideways. Now on this stitch, if I touch reverse now, it's gonna change directions. And now it's gonna come down towards me. If I hit my reverse again, it's gonna change directions back to go the other direction. See that? And then if I hit it again, it's gonna come up. So I was able to frame out a box here without, um, without actually moving my fabric at all. That's because I have the multi-directional feeding. Um, so let me turn the camera so that you can see the display and I'll show you. Okay, so this right here, my S menu, is one of my multi-directional feed. These are the different stitches that I can use to do this multi-directional feed. And you'll notice there's a reverse symbol here. So it's showing it now first stitching off to the side. And then when I hit the reverse, it shows it coming back forward. When I touch the reverse button, it shows it going the other direction and then showing it back in reverse. So you can see how we're changing the direction here. But so now that's one. Now the other one here doesn't have all these stitches. So all of these stitches only work in the S menu for multi-directional that way. When I go to the T, this works a little different now. Um, I have two choices, straight stitch or the tripled over straight stitch. And now instead of hitting the reverse button, I can hit the directional arrows. And so I can go diagonal, down, over. So um, again, this, this can come in handy sometimes when you're not, when you're working on a fabric and you don't wanna have to reposition the fabric, but you just need to stitch a little to the left or a little to the right and get yourself re repositioned. You can do that using the multi-directional feed. Now, the cool thing is, as you're going through the stitches on the machine, there's some fantastic stitches built into the machine. You'll notice a lot of the stitches then, um, especially the decorative stitches, Stitches, maybe stitches that are going to move the fabric side to side. A good example is one of our quilting stitches here. So let's say you are not super great at free motion quilting. And so you decide that you want to use one of the built in stippling stitches. Well, I can select, say, stitch 61. Um, 63 is another one that's even bigger. But we're going to do we're going to do 61. And you'll see how it mimics free motion. Um, and it, this is actually one of the best in the industry as far as a kind of fake free motion stitch that the machine is doing for us. So it's really great. So we'll watch this stitch out. All right, so let's watch the built-in stippling stitch. And so this is on uh, just a little piece of quilted fabric that I had around. I used to do samples. 
And this is some of the more natural ones. Uh, a lot of the machines, a lot of machines have a built-in stippling stitch, but they're so compact and tight together that they don't look natural. It looks like it was sewn on a sewing machine. So then you can kind of start to angle it if you want to start trying to fill in your block. Um, you could also just do it in rows next to each other and it's gonna kind of fill in everything, um, but really great. So I'm gonna show you, um, we're gonna turn, 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 and then let's stop it. And I will show you another one that's even bigger. If you go, well, that's, I like that one, but maybe um, it's too, still too tight for the kind of stuff that I do. So I'm gonna select the next one. This one is a really loose one. So you might decide, oh no, this is this is better for my my quilting projects because this is going to be a lot. There's a lot more space here, so you might decide that this one looks a lot more natural. And again, if you're kind of doing this in rows, they're going to really nestle together, and um, it's going to look great. But let's take a look at this. See that? Yep, so the machine's doing that. So again, multi-directional feeding, really, really great to have. All right, so let's talk about doing our alphabets now. So we've seen some of our decorative stitches, but there is so much built into this machine. Um, really, they have some of the best stitches in the industry, just really beautiful stuff. But now we wanna write a name. So we wanna switch gears a little bit and we have, it's really easy, we have our tab down here. One thing too I wanna point out, Husqvarna has the best interface in the industry. I sell many different brands. I'm not necessarily loyal to one brand or another, um, but I can tell you for 100%, everything that I sell, which is most, most of what's in the industry, this is the easiest machine to navigate. They make all the symbols really easy to understand. It's a very simple machine to figure out on your own. I really like the way that this is designed. I mean, this is very obvious that that is where my sewing stitches are. And it's very obvious if I'm gonna do a name that this A takes me right into my alphabets. So now when I select the A, I have choices on the, on the display on which kind of alphabet that I wanna work with. And then you'll notice there's numbers next to them and those are kind of the size that they're telling us the alphabet's gonna be. We're gonna pick the outline alphabet. So we're gonna select that just by touching on it. And yet at the bottom, you'll notice that we have a little keyboard that pops up. And now we can start to write our name. We can write whatever we want. We can write a whole sentence. If you wanna put a, a label on something and you wanna write made with love, you can write out the whole thing and the machine is going to stitch it out. So in this case, um, I am going to just do the name village. So V, so we're gonna do start with a capital V. Then I'm gonna do lowercase I L L. A G E. So now I wrote village. So now there's a few other little things to know, but it's all very simple. If I start sewing this out, basically it's going to do it as a border. So it's going to repeat the word village, 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 village over and over and over again. But, but typically when I'm writing a name or doing a label or something like that, I don't want it to repeat. So I actually just want it to write what I've put on the screen and then stop. So now I can do that a few different ways. One is I can touch this button that says stop and that's going to put a stop there. So it's going to go village and it's going to stop but I'm going to delete that because I don't want that one. If I wanted to do village and I wanted to do a lock stitch after village, I would touch fix and it would do a lock stitch, but I don't want that. So we're going to take that one away. And again, you're noticing there's a trash can here. So if I made a mistake, let's say I made a mistake on one of these characters. If I hit the trash can, it's going to delete the last one that I, I did. Um, or if I needed to toggle up to a certain one, I can use the up button and say, okay, wait a minute, I, I kind of messed up on, on the eye. You can see the eyes highlighted blue and I hit trash and then I can go back and put in the correct, the correct character. So really easy to make, you know, changes if you, if you made a little, little error in your spelling. Okay, but what I want, I want the cutter. So when I write my name or the word village, because that's the name of my store, at the end, I can touch the cut. So now it's going to go right village and it's going to stop 
It's going to lock it for me automatically, and then it's going to cut all just by selecting the cut symbol. So the great thing is, too, the typewriter pops up really easy. I write what I want, and I don't have to hit any other buttons. I don't have to hit programming. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is just simply start sewing, and the machine is going to just sew this out. So I'm going to change the camera view, and I'm just going to hit the foot control, and the machine is going to start sewing. All right, so let's stitch this out. And then when it gets to the end, it's going to stop and cut. Take a look, see, there it is, village, done. So that's really easy, really easy to write names, really easy to program on, on the machine. So let's go back over and we're gonna talk about a few other things. Okay, so now I wanna show you how we can combine sewing stitches together. To combine sewing stitches, we have this little tab at the bottom and this is our programming tab. So it has an A with a zigzag next to it. So if we touch that symbol, that is going to open up our program screen and it says program in the cor corner. So this is where we can start combining different combinations of stitches together. So to do this, um, let's go find some fun stitches to put together. So we're going to go into our H menu. This has neat little characters for us to play with. And let's go find some that go together nicely. We can do the car and the little trailer if we wanted, uh, the little train. But let's just do, let's do a spool of thread. So you can see a spool of thread popped up. And then let's do the sewing needle. Those go together pretty well. I am not gonna tell the machine I want it to stop because I want this to be a repeating pattern. So I want it to be more of a border instead of just a one, one time pattern. So I'm gonna leave that alone and we are going to stitch this out. And so again, it's really easy. We just went into our little program tab, selected the stitches we wanted together, and we can select more than just two if we wanted more combinations, but you just select them and you just simply start sewing. Couldn't it be easier? So let me change the camera. All right, so let's stitch this out. interesting too because a lot of sewing machines um, don't do very good if you happen to sew off the fabric um, but the nice thing with the Husqvarna is if you do sew off the fabric a little bit it's not gonna hurt anything it's perfect um, all right so now you can see we made that combination we got the spool and we've got the the needle and thread there so um, really really cool and super easy to combine stitches together I want to talk now about saving so if we did make a pattern or let's say we wrote a name that we're going to use again or made that quilt label that said made with love, then we don't want to have to recreate that every time if it's something we're going to use over and over and over again. So what we can actually do is we can use our little heart here to save the stitch. So then it pops up with our little save menu and we can rename it whatever we want. We can write needle and thread all right so then i know uh, that's what i called it so we're gonna hit that and now it's successfully saved into the machine so then we can go back and we can retrieve our stitch if we want to by going to our file folder here and you can see the stitch so if i'm going let's go back and let's just pick a different stitch and we'll pretend we're coming back to the machine six months later and now we want to make the stitch that we saved so we can just go to our file folder and we can select the stitch and you want to just hold it down and when you hold it down it's going to load the stitch back onto the screen so really easy the file folder is any stitch that we have saved is going to show itself there in the file folder 
All right, now I want to show you the smart save feature on the machine. That is the heart that has the little clock symbol on it that's next to the heart we just used to save. So the first heart saves into this menu. The second heart will save what we are sewing currently so that we can recall it when we turn the machine on and off in the opening screen. So let's say we, we're sewing and we're on a, a straight stitch and we've repositioned that straight stitch to our quarter inch mark on our foot and we've made our stitch length a little, little different. And so we're gonna go to bed now and because we're tired. So we're gonna save where we are and what we're doing in our sewing process so that in the morning we can pick it back up. We don't necessarily want to save this stitch permanently into the machine. We are just wanting to, we just want to recall it for sewing in the morning. So what we do is we hit this one with the little um, clock symbol on it, the heart with the clock, and it asks us, do we want to save this? And we say yes, and this is our smart save feature. Okay, it says save successful. So let's let's switch to a different stitch now um, and we will pretend that we're waking up in the morning refreshed and we're ready to start sewing again. So when we turn on the machine, of course, we turn it on and, and this is the screen that comes up first. If you notice at the bottom, we've got our little heart symbol with a little reverse arrow on it. When we touch this, it takes us right back to where we were last night when we went to bed. So anytime you want that to happen, you want the machine to remember what you were doing, when you restart, hit that, go to bed in the morning, hit the heart on the opening screen, and you're right back to where you were with all your stitch adjustments. All right, now let's talk about how we do free motion quilting with the machine. Um, they make it really easy on the Husqvarna machine to do free motion quilting. They're so great for free motion quilting. One is they're so big, right? We got a really long arm. We got a lot of height. So it's going to be much easier to, to do this. Now, to get the machine set for free motion quilting, it's very easy. There is a little symbol here at the bottom that shows a little stippling stitch. So a little meander. That is our free motion setting. So we're going to touch that. And the machine pops up and says, okay. What foot are we going to use to do free motion with? We have a few options. We have our sensor Q foot. We have a ruler foot if we're working with a ruler work. And then we have our free motion floating foot. That is the one we are going to use to demonstrate. So to set the machine, I pick that foot. You'll hear a click because the machine is automatically turned off the feed teeth so they are lowered. I have a little adjuster here if I need to adjust the height of this foot because this foot is made to float right above the fabric when we're quilting. So if the fabric is really fluffy, we might want to do some adjustments. But for the most part, the machine does a really good job sensing the thickness of the fabric and presetting itself. So now we've turned on on free motion. We're just going to hit the check mark. Let me reposition the camera and we'll do some. All right, so we're gonna take off our presser foot. On Husqvarna, when you take off a presser foot, they pull towards you. They do not push downward. Downward is not good. Um, so again, they push on just in that direction and they pull off straight towards you, but never down. I can't emphasize that enough. All right, so then we take our little foot here. So this is, this is the foot we selected on the display. So it has an R on it. This is the Sensormatic R foot. And it's going to slide right straight onto the ankle. And you'll have the little R facing forward in a natural way that you can read it. So that's one way you can know the direction the foot goes on. So you just give it a little push and it pops on like that. Now, remember, the machine has already lowered the feet teeth for us automatically. The machine is also going to keep the foot at the proper height for us automatically. And we don't have to do anything but move our fabric at this point. So I'm going to use my um, start stop button. Let me turn the speed down a little bit. And that's it. All I have to do now is just move my fabric. And remember, if I'm using my start stop button, if I wanted to stop the machine, I can just touch my foot on the foot control, or I could reach back up for my button. See my free motion there? Not too bad. Really, really easy to do. And when we want to set the machine back to normal, 
we are going to pop off the presser foot. I'm going to attach my regular presser foot back on. And then let me just move the camera over here. All I have to do now is touch the free motion icon again and uncheck the box. And now I am completely back to normal. So look how fast that was to set the machine up to do free motion quilting. There, I didn't have to get out screwdrivers. I didn't have to you know, jump through a bunch of hoops. It was very easy. I selected it on the screen and I popped on the foot and the machine did the rest. Really great. Okay, so now we are gonna do buttonholes. So to do a buttonhole, buttonholes are in our utility menu. So our A menu, we can scroll down and we see all the different buttonhole options. There's quite a few. We're just gonna pick a standard buttonhole. So we'll pick the first one, which is number 42. You can see on the display that we have the buttonhole foot displayed and we have a buttonhole displayed. So let me show you how we attach our buttonhole foot. All right, so we have our buttonhole foot. That's this guy here. It actually plugs into the machine. There is a little port in the back of the machine over here. I can feel it's right here. Um, that port is where this plugs into. So we are gonna pop off our regular foot. We are going to slide on our buttonhole foot. Before I slide it on though, I do wanna show you this little wheel. This is the wheel that rolls on the fabric when we're doing a buttonhole. And if you look at this wheel, there is a little white section. You see that with two little white teeth, it looks like? That lines up with the white line on the foot because that is always gonna be the starting position of this wheel. So when you start your buttonhole, you have to make sure the white is lined up with the white. All right, so let's take this and we're going to pop it on. I am going to plug in my foot, and then I'm going to make sure my little white lines are lined up. And I know I've sewn a lot on this fabric already, but we're just gonna do a little bit more. It doesn't matter if we go on top of each other. All right, let me move it back over to display because I wanna show you something. All right, so on the display, get this repositioned. Um, we see again, we see the buttonhole and we see down here now that we've plugged the foot in, we will see the size of the buttonhole that we're doing. I might actually do 43. It's a little, a little thinner. Um, so then we can lengthen the buttonhole to whatever size we want. And one thing to remember is this is the actual size that the buttonhole is going to be on the fabric. So if you held your button up to the display, then you could see the stitch um, to make sure that the buttonhole is the right size for the button that you're doing if you're unsure. Another thing you can do is on the front of the machine is a ruler at the front. So you can hold your foot up to the ruler and decide what size you want. So two different ways you can do it. You can hold it here and go, okay, that's correct. Or you can hold it to the little ruler and say, okay, I need a 19 or 20 um, millimeter buttonhole. So once you get the size set properly, then all we have to do is sew it out. So I'll move the camera again. And let's sew out this buttonhole together. scissors. All right, and there is our completed buttonhole. And if this again was the button, then it matches the correct size. So very simple to do buttonholes. And again, this foot is going to make it so it's going to repeat that same buttonhole over and over and over again. So really great way that Husqvarna does their buttonholes. Actually, again, think they have the industry best way of, of doing buttonholes and their buttonholes look so good and clean on, on the fabric. So really, really great. And when we're done doing the buttonhole, it's really easy to get back to normal because we just unplug, pop the foot off, 
pop our regular foot back on and we are back to normal. All right, so in the next video, we're gonna go through the, the tools menu together. Um, but before we do, I wanted to just point out a couple other little detail things. Um, one is this stitch plate is your standard zigzag stitch plate. It's the normal one we, we do a lot of our sewing with. Um, but the machine also comes with a straight stitch plate. Um, the plates just pop on, it's really simple. But the nice thing with the machine is that when you put on a straight stitch plate, the machine automatically knows what plate is attached. And why this is important is the machine will not let you zigzag by accident when you have a straight stitch plate attached onto the machine. It'll only let you zigzag when you have the zigzag plate on. So it's recommended when you're doing your, your piecing work and you put on your straight stitch only piecing foot that you also put on your straight stitch plate because the machine doesn't know what foot you have on, but it definitely knows what plate is attached. And so if you put the plate on with the foot at the same time, you won't accidentally zigzag on your straight stitch only foot also because again, you have the straight stitch plate on and the machine knows. So uh, really nice. I wanna move back over to the, the display and I wanna show you a few little, little shortcuts on some of the stitches. So when I do have a stitch on the display, you can hold down on the stitch and you can get shortcuts like mirror image. So if you ever are touching the display, you will notice that little shortcuts pop up that just give you a few other options. And the options may be different depending on what stitch that you're actually on on the machine. All right, well, that is it for this video. The next video, we're gonna cover the tools menu. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna backtrack just for a second because I nearly forgot such an, a great, great feature and it would have been such a shame if I would have missed talking about this. Um, that is our question mark. This question mark in the top corner, this will answer questions about anything that you see on the display. So if you don't know what this symbol is, you can touch the question mark and you can touch the symbol and it's gonna tell you what it's for. If there's more information that you could possibly read about, you can touch the link. That's gonna open up our instruction book and it's gonna give us more information about that icon that we touched on. So let's get that closed. Let's go back to where we were. All right, so our help button. So again, let's say we touch that and we go, oh, I forgot what this funny little symbol is down here. And you touch on that symbol, it's gonna tell you, well, that's our free motion symbol. If you wanna know more about a sewing stitch, you can touch the help button and then you can touch a sewing stitch and it's gonna tell you more about the stitch. So it doesn't matter what is on the display, that help button is gonna answer questions about everything that you see on the display. All right, so that is now officially gonna conclude this, this part of the video. And then the next video is going to be the tools menu.